Thank you so much, members of the Nairobi Central Meeting Choir, and for the, is it the glorious, glorious choir? Uh, you, you, you children did a fantastic job. I wish I could pack all of you in my suitcase. <laughs> take you and take you back with me. Beautiful, beautiful. I want to thank the directors of the children choir to work with them so hard and nurture them, nurture them. Um, because we are, there's a, there's a war going on for the souls of the children and we are grateful that we are protecting them here in the church. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Karibu. Karibu. <laughs> Great, at least I can go home with a word. Um, it is my joy to welcome you back to our Friday mornings edition of Camp Meeting 2023 here in Nairobi Central. For those of you, wherever you are watching, those of you up early in the Cayman Islands or in South Florida or in Toronto, Canada or in the London, UK, wherever you're watching or in um, Jamaica, we're delighted to have you. And we hope and trust that you'll be tremendously blessed as we uh, worship together here this morning. Um, so we're coming down. I'm going to ask the guys and the, my technician to give me a little volume more on my monitors, on my monitors, monitors only. One, two, three, four, five. A little bit more volume on my monitors only, monitors only. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, we're coming down to the to the end of camp meeting and today and tomorrow we will be focusing our attention on that first piece of your theme. Beautiful, that sounds good. On that first piece of your theme that says Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. And I told you I'm a troubled preacher. Because I continue to be concerned. That's my personal concern. That there are many in my church, even though we preach it, still have not taken it seriously. And so the second coming of Christ has been like a byword. Just a cliche. Just something we talk about. Something we sing about and has not taken it seriously. So today and tomorrow, we will focus on this particular aspect to see if I can sensitize you and those watching around the world of just how close we are to the coming of Christ and to the end of the world. Your scripture reading this morning came to us from Ezekiel 33, 11, where Jesus says, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the, come on, help me read, but that the wicked may turn from his ways and what? Live. And then, and then God, almost like an appeal, says, turn, turn from your Evil ways, for why will you die, how hosts of Israel? In other words, God is appealing for the wicked to turn from their wicked ways. He has no interest in us dying in our sins. Is the church with me? It is for that reason why he sent Noah to preach for 120 years to warn the people so that they can. It is for that reason why he built an ark so that they can be saved. It's for that reason why he sent two angels down in Sodom um, just before the fire. Every time there is a, dis a destruction coming, Christ, because he has no interest in the wicked dying in their sins, he always sent them a warning, sent them a notice, giving them an opportunity to get to save their souls. Is the church still with me? Good. It is for that same reason why we are unpacking this message this morning. 
This message is designed, one more time, one more time, to help some of us become aware of how dangerously close we are to the end of the world and to put our house in order. So, come with me as we talk to the Lord. Father, unpack your word and feed your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going back to Matthew 24. That's where the children were a while ago. And we were there yesterday morning. In Matthew 24, we said that Jesus sat down with his disciples on Mount Olivet. And in verse 3, the disciples came to him privately. We used that yesterday morning. Let's use it again because there's something more in it we're going for. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him how? Privately. We told you why that was private yesterday. And saying, come on, come on, everybody, help me read. Saying, tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and what else? The end of the age or the end of the world. Right, that's the last piece we are interested in. What will be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? That's what we are interested in. That's why we have a Seventh-day Adventist church. That's why we are preachers. That last piece there. What is the sign of your coming? So that we can be prepared. That's why we are here. That's why you took... These, this week off from work to be in camp meeting. That's why the church invests all the funds in camp meeting to prepare Nairobi for this event, the second coming of Christ. So that's what we're going to pay our attention is. So here's it. I'm going to pull out that little piece of the text and let's see if we can. And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Where, well, when they asked Jesus that, Jesus sat down. Stay with this preacher this morning because I'm going somewhere. Jesus sat down and he listed a shopping list of signs. That was in verse 3. In verse 4, he answered them. Sign number 1. Take heed that no man deceive you, for many will come in my name. Where do people come in Jesus' name? In church. So the sign is saying, there will be Many churches in the last days. Is the church with me? Yes? Yes. So when I was researching for my book, Is God Still Coming? And I reached, I said, let me, let me ask Google how many different denominations there are. Because when Jesus spoke this, par uh, this prophecy, Brother George, Elder George, there was only one. So I asked Google, and Google spit out 45,000. What? 45,000. Does that mean 45,000 different denomination? When Jesus said this word, there was only one. Jesus says, just before I come, there will be an explosion of churches. 45,000. In the very next verse, verse 6, he says, the next sign, there will be wars. We talked about that yesterday morning. Nations will invade nations, and it's still going on right now. He says, then he says, there'll be Famines, we talked about that yesterday morning. Food shortages, we talk about. Even right now, there's a concern for that by the United Nations. He said, he said there'll be pestilences. We talked about that yesterday morning. We ain't spending any time on that because we talked about that yesterday morning. Diseases, COVID, cancer, AIDS, Ebola, you name it, over and over. Then he says more than that, there'll be earthquakes. We talked about that yesterday morning um, in different parts of the world you saw yesterday that the word that when we look at the amount of earthquakes from from 1902 right until now the earth is on fire he continues he continues then he says there'll be rise in crime and violence the love of many shall wax cold yes there's mass shooting left right and center huh? all over the place 
Mass shooting in schools, mass shooting in courthouse, mass shooting in shopping center, mass shooting in churches, mass shooting in, 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 in cinemas, every single, there's no safe place anymore. Mass shooting here in Nairobi. Last time I, hear, I was here in Nairobi, as soon as I went back home, I heard that Westland Mall, is it Westland Mall? Yeah, 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 yeah. West Gates. Yeah, and I was there just a couple of weeks before. And I said, what in the Lord? Mass shooting. Jesus said there'll be, he said there'll be lawlessness because lawlessness shall increase iniquity. Lawlessness, hey, 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 we're watching our television. People want to defund police and ban police. Are you kidding me? Mob robbery in California where I was for the last three years is a new type of robbery. They use social media and about 100 of, or 150 young people get together on social media and they all hit a plaza, all of them, conversion of plaza like a bees, like a swarm of bees and they broke the windows and snatched things. By the time the cops come, they're on their way out. They empty a whole store. That's a new type of robbery. Jesus says, there'll be changes in the climate, floods and hurricanes, tsunamis and tornadoes and wildfire. We talked about that the other day. We're not going back there this morning. He says, there'll be return of homosexualities. Yes, in the, as it was in the days of. Yep, 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 yep. And now, 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 we have more than Saddam. And then he says also, there'll be a sexual revolution in the last days. But that's not even where I'm going. So he gave us a long list of signs. And then he gave a parable. It says, now learn the parable from the fig tree. When its branches already become tender and put forth leaves, you know the summer is near. So you also, when you see all, all these things, you know that my coming is near. How near? At the door the door so as I sat on my floor with all these books around me excavating the prophetic word of God the spirit of the Lord opened my mind and my eyes to something I've never seen in all my life in the church reading the Bible I sudden you know when the spirit working on you is just amazing I suddenly noticed something. I'm going to put it on the text. It's in your Bible. I'm going to put it there on the screen for you. So Jesus answered and said, when they asked him, What's, what are the signs of your coming? Jesus answered and said, take heed that no man deceives you. Verse 4, verse 5. For many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Okay, we just talked about that. Verse 6. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. We just talk about that. Jesus says, hey, hey, here's it now. Here's the, here's the part. Here's the part. See, help me read. See that you are not troubled. What? Ah, ah. Hey, hey, hey. You can't pass this stuff. See that you are not troubled. For. For all these things must come to pass, comma, but the end is not yet. Now that blew me away. So I put down my pen and I said, hold on, there's something here, there's something here. Jesus gave me, the, gave me this list of signs and said, you're going to see them happening just before I come back, but don't be worried about them. Oh, stay with the preacher here. Stay with the preacher. The list of things we just looked at. Crime and violence and wars and earthquakes and you name it. We just went to. Jesus says, don't worry about them. Don't get a heart attack over them. Don't stress yourself over them. Because they are not the curtain call. You know what curtain call is? No? They are not what's going to end the show. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. You will see, watch the preacher, watch the preacher. You will see them happening. You will see them happening. 
But they are not the one that will bring in the ultimate end. Is the church with me? They will precede my coming. But they are not the one to get high blood pressure over. The end is not yet. Oh, okay. So, I read down a little further. And I came to verse 14 of the same chapter. Just a few verses down. Here's verse 6 that we just looked at. You'll hear of rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. Don't worry. Don't get no high blood pressure over these signs. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Okay? When I reach to verse 14, here's what it says. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. Comma. I must pause that comma. Am I right? Then here it comes. And then... And then the end will come. Oh, my eyes pop open. My eyes pop open. My eyes pop open. Look. Verse 6 says, all these signs I told you, don't worry over them. You'll see them. But those are not the curtain call. Those are not what's going to crack the sky open. But any day, any day, any day, you see the gospel of the kingdom preach in all the world. Then you can now know that the sky is about to open. And I'm saying, hang on. How is it? How is it that we miss this in church? How is it that we are not highlighting this? And I started to ask a couple of questions. Lord. Why did you choose to tell us which sign not to worry about and which sign to be concerned about? And then the Spirit delivered the message. The Lord knows, the Lord knows that had he not told us which one will draw the curtains on the whole scene, had he not told us which one will be the final one, he knows that after every sign, people would be looking for his second coming and then get disappointed. Wars and then, no, Jesus, no coming. Earthquake, no, Jesus, not coming. So people would be disappointed after disappointed and after a while they just give up. Ah, so that is one of the, out of his goodness and his mercy. Like a good teacher, he prepared us. You will see these signs. They will come. When you see them happening, don't worry over them. They're just indication that the time is there. But the one you need to keep your eye on, the curtain caller, the final item on the agenda. Anytime you are alive on planet earth and recognize that the gospel, that the gospel is gone all over the world, then you know it is all over by the shop. So, the question is then, has the gospel gone over the world? Ah! I'll put up the sign up there. Go for the next few minutes that they give me on the clock. I want to decode this sign for you. I want to decode this sign for you. The first, the first thing up there is the gospel. Jesus says, the sign that will bring the end on planet earth is the gospel of the kingdom. What is that? Well, they told us in, in school that the gospel means the good news. Good news. Good news of what? Well, the gospel really is the gospel of the kingdom that should be preached. The gospel of the kingdom. There are two kingdoms we are told. The kingdom of grace. And what else? The kingdom of glory. Yes, yes, those are the two. The gospel contains the kingdom of grace. The kingdom of glory. When Christ came, he preached the gospel. The kingdom of, he of heaven is at hand. That kingdom that he spoke about is the kingdom of grace. Which means, even though man sin and is destined to hell. Jesus 
Jesus came, gave his life, so whosoever will, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but they have everlasting life. That's the gospel that Christ preached. And so, so, so watch this, what Christ is saying, this gospel of giving man the opportunity to be saved in the kingdom of grace got to be preached around the world. In other words, the kingdom of glory is coming, the kingdom of grace is already here, the kingdom of glory is coming, the kingdom of grace is spiritual, the kingdom of glory is literal, the kingdom of grace is here, the kingdom of glory is coming. If you want to be part of the kingdom of glory, you have to be part of the kingdom of grace to be part of the kingdom of grace you have to accept the lord jesus christ repent of your sins get baptized have your name written down in glory is the church with me that's the message the message must be preached and by the way jesus is the king of both the kingdom of glory and the kingdom of grace that's why when he was born the wise man says where is he that is born what king king that's the kingdom of glory that message must be preached around the world. So here's it. Number two, the message must be preached around the world and then the end comes. So if you're sleeping, wake up with me. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up. For those of you just waking up out of your bed, rub your eye, wash your face, and catch this piece. So we can, so we can use this to get an idea, a good feel of how close we are to the end of the world by tracking how much of the world has the gospel gone. Does that make sense? Yes, 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 yes. If we are able to track how far the gospel has spread, then we are able to determine how close we are to the end. Now, 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 now work, now I get your attention. Work with me, work with me, work with me. How, all eyes on me, all eyes on me. How will it happen? How will what happen? How will the gospel get around the entire globe? How will it happen? What do you mean, preacher, how will it happen? Well, let me tell you what I mean. Jesus died A.D. 31. Which means when he spoke this prophecy, it was about A.D. 30. In A.D. 30, just stay back, travel, travel with me back, way back in time to A.D. 30. In A.D. 30, they had no communication system. Yes? They had no transportation system to move from one country to the other. And they had no publication system. What, what do I mean? Well, what do I mean by that? Well, let's take the publication system. In AD 30, they had nothing to write. How are we going to get the gospel around the world when they don't have anything? This is the first form of writing. It's called cuneiform writing. They used to take stuff and dig out, dig out a letter or two out of stone. Can you imagine if we were to depend on that to write the Bible? Amen. Oh, how long it would take us to write Psalm 23? When Jesus spoke, when Jesus spoke, uh, when Jesus spoke, this is the other, this is a, uh, using quill, this is a stage of writing, move from there to, to using these feather stuff and the pen and they would dip it in ink. You know what I'm talking about? And write one word and before you finish the word, it dry off, you have to dip again. Oh Lord, I'm going to say, hey, 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 there are about 8.5 billion people around the planet. Can you imagine if we were to depend on that to, to write Bible? When, when is this going to happen? When, when Jesus spoke this, that the, that the gospel is going to be around the entire world. And by the way, just remember that around the world, we don't speak the same language. Am I right? You in Kenya speak almost a million languages. Everybody has their own language. Yes. Yes, so, so it's not just writing Bible in one language or for everybody. You have to make it in different 
language is, when will the Chinese hear and the, Sp and the Spanish people hear uh, and, and, and the Tigalis hear and, uh, and, and uh, when will all people hear uh, in Jesus' days? When Jesus spoke this stuff, it looked preposterous. It looked impossible for that to happen. But in 1436, a man named Johannes Gothenburg invented the first printing press. And by 1452, the first book was printed from the first press in human history. Anybody want to guess what book that was? The Bible. Oh! The Bible. Hey, I checked, I checked, I checked YouTube, um, Google a while ago. The Bible is now translated. It is the most printed book on the planet in, in 3,342 different languages. Woo! Every hotel you go and pull out a jaw, there's a Bible. There's men's version, women's version, children's version. Is the church with me? Ah, praise the Lord. Because now, 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 now we have printing press that spits off books in seconds. Hey, we can distribute Bible like autumn leaves. When Jesus spoke it, it was impossible. At least it appears that way. But that is an indication to how close we are to the fulfillment of the last sign. That's just the publication. Oh, when Jesus spoke, the people used to walk from one place to the other to carry a message. Am I right? They didn't even have cars, worse, motorbike, not even a bicycle. If they're not walking, they're riding on camels back. It takes them months and months and months. Hey, and, and then if they're going by sea, they didn't have any engine in the boat. They had to paddle. Right? So it takes them all, and months and months. Poor Paul. It took Paul months and months to travel. Hey, it was impossible to go across the entire globe. But now, I can choose any one of them. In fact, I'm going home on one. But now, now, I'm from the Cayman Islands, amen? And, and, and if you didn't know anything about the gospel, I'm now able to travel to bring the gospel into Nairobi. Hey! When Jesus said it, it was impossible. Now we're moving faster than the speed of sound. Impossible. Hang on, 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 hang on. When Jesus spoke, there was not even a microphone that he used. You know, I wondered, I, I, I always wondered, Brother Dan, how did that thing work? Because one time he had 5,000 people. He fed 5,000, am I right? Yeah, and they had no microphone. How did that go? Hey, hey, he must have given the winds a mighty voice. He didn't even, no, there's no electricity, there's no microphone, there's no nothing, there's nothing to spread the gospel. <laughs> there, there, there's no cell phone or telephone, there's nothing, there's nothing. When Jesus said, hey, listen to the preacher, when Jesus said this, it is not possible, it wouldn't, in the eyes of the average person, it's not possible. But now, in the palm of your hand, wherever you are on the planet, down in Congo, you can hear O'Connor preaching. In Brazil, in the jungle, in the Amazon, you can hear O'Connor preaching. I'm flying in a jet and I can hear O'Connor preaching. Hello? We, 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 are, we, are broadcast, we are broadcasting this very, this, even as I preach right now, the fulfillment of the last sign is taking place right now. Is the church understand what I'm talking about? The fact that you have an online audience that is not present here, that could be in London or Russia or China or anywhere on the planet, is the, is the curtain call. Hey! That's why I'm here in Nairobi, because I want people to understand where we stand. 
you have a satellite system circling the planet, picks up the signal, delivers it right around the world so we can sit in our homes wherever on the planet you are. Watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me. There is no longer any boundaries to the world. Amen? First time you couldn't go into, into China with the gospel. Oh, now we can fly over CG's, Xi Jinping's head and drop the word in the homes of the people. When Jesus spoke, there was no internet. Nothing. By 1969, men start to put together the basics, the nucleus for what will now become the World Wide Web. By 1991, we have the first, first World Wide Web set up. And all around the world, no matter where you are, you can use the internet and hear the gospel, both video, audio, or in print. Now the gospel has gone on every single continent. And by the way, thanks to Google, we can use Google, Google Translate. Is the church with me? Translate in the different language. Is God good or what? And yet, we all are enjoying all of this technology and we have not associated it that it is the very last sign on the list. Because nobody made the connection. We only marvel at it. But nobody made the connection. So I stood in California. And preached. Right around the world. Yeah. I can stand right on this pulpit and preach. And somebody in Kingston, Jamaica say, Amen. <laughs> oh no, you didn't get that. I can stand right here in Nairobi Central. And say, God is good. And somebody in London says, all the time. That's where we are. is that amazing? That's what Jesus saw almost 2,000 years ago. The disciples could not understand what he was saying. So what he's actually saying, if you happen to live in this age, then it is in your time that I am coming. Is the church with me? When I call people to give their heart to the Lord, it's because I am aware, I am too aware of how close we are. I'm too aware. When people can't come to church because they have to work or because they do, because of that, because of, I'm troubled because they don't understand. In a few days, your workplace will not exist anymore. Your business will not exist anymore. Your money has no value anymore. Hey! This is the time to get ready. We are on the last sign. And it has been rapidly fulfilled. And yet. Here's what is. Oh, I forgot I had a timer. I, I hate that clock. And yet. And yet. You know what is amazing? With all, watch this, with all that technology in the world, with all that technology in the world, here's what is amazing. God is too good, you know. With all that technology in the world, we were still contained in the four walls of our church. You in Nairobi Central, new life over there, Karangata up there, me in my church, Ebenezer and Cayman Islands, we all are contained in our church for years with the same technology. One and two people go on TV and start to preach, but the large majority of us were still contained in our four walls. And so the question is, if we remain contained in the four walls, how do we really get the message out beyond the one or two people who turn television evangelists? 
How do we get it out? Because we all contain, you know, every Sabbath morning we come and we contain in the four walls. Is the church with me? Yeah. So the folks who have no church around them are in problem. How do we, how do we get, how, how does the prophecy fulfill if we are contained in our four walls? I was wondering over that. Until 2019 in December, God permitted my choice of words. God permitted a little virus to seep out of a lab. Well, I think it come from a lab. So small, we can't even see it. You can't touch it. You can't see it. But it shuts down the country. Huh? Here, here's, here's the amazing stuff. Here's what is amazing. Here's what's amazing. Huh? The whole world, the whole world went crazy over COVID-19. And they manufactured vaccinations. And they mandated it. And they locked down highways. And they locked down factories. And they locked down schools. And they locked down. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is the best thing that coronavirus brought to this planet. Did, it, did the pastor just say that? Yes, 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 yes. The best thing. Because they locked down churches. So we could no longer come into our four little walls. Amen. So what do you think we did? Hey, we locked down, <laughs> locked down churches. Church service are cancelled. Church service will be closed until further notice. We are sorry church is closed. <laughs> God is so good. Because God knew that the message, that the prophecy cannot be fulfilled if we remain in our four little walls. Are you with me? So God forced the church out of its wall and placed the church online. Ah. Amen. Amen. Uh-huh. So guess what? People who would never venture in a Seventh-day Adventist church now was able to get the church in their living room. Hey! Hallelujah! People who don't know what message we preach because they think Adventists are cult now get the power of the gospel in their living room, in their bedroom, in the palms of their hands. Hey! So you think it was a little virus that passed through to No, 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 no. It is the hand of God fulfilling the last prophecy in the Bible. It's the hand of God took the message from the four worlds, placed it online. So everywhere you go, the any country you go, communists aren't capitalists. Any bush you go in, you know, I went to a deep, deep, deep rural place the other day. There's a, old, a little old lady. She has a donkey. Can't remember which place I was. She has a load on the donkey, driving the donkey. Deep rural, no shoes on her feet. Deep rural. Her cell phone. Oh, I said, this old country lady has a cell phone. Cell phone ring. Amen. You go to the market, these sellers in the market selling banana and breadfruit and all, they had two and three cell phones. Anywhere you are, whoever you are, Whatever language you preach. Is the church with me? You now have front row seat to the gospel. Praise the Lord. We are now asking people, join us online. The gospel has gone across the world. Whoa! Now here's the problem. If this is the last sign, 
then we are in trouble because it has fulfilled more than we could ever possible comprehend. I sat down and I wrote it in my book. By the way, please get a copy of that book. Is God still coming? Everything I say and more is in it. Blows your mind away. I said, what? So let me take... Let me take you back. Thank you, guys. They gave me a little bit more time. You're good, guys. Let, let me finish this up. So now you understand that we are tinkling on the edge. If you understand a football game, if you understand a football game, normal time is over. We're on extra time. You know what they give a little extra time? Yeah, yes, that's where we are. Normal time is over. We are on extra time. And extra time is always maybe just a few minutes beyond. Is the church with me? Yes. When camp meeting finish, I want that to be placed in the back of your mind. You plan to get married? Remember that. You plan to choose a job? Remember that. Whatever decision you have in your life, remember that. Normal time is over. We are on extra time. The ref has the whistle in his mouth watching the clock. And any moment now, the final whistle may go and it's all over by the shop. Wherever it catches you, that's it. So let me wrap this up then and send you home. So I was, <laughs> I was fascinated by the sign and I started to decode it because the sign says, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. And here's what catch my eye as a preacher. As a witness. What? To all nations. So, so, so I'm sorry. I, I got fascinated by this because I started to ask myself the question. Has the, has the mission changed? What mission preacher? Oh, when the, when the gospel started preaching, it was not being preached as a witness. No. No, 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 no. When the gospel, when Jesus preached the gospel, when John preached the gospel, it was for people to repent. Amen. Yes, here's the commission. The commission, go teach them and baptize them. Am I right? To observe all things, yeah. So the preaching of the gospel was for a transformation of character, was for repentance. Is the church with me? Yeah, but the mission has changed and nobody noticed it. What Jesus says, in the last day, the, what? I'm going to say this very slowly. The purpose for preaching is no longer what we had at the beginning. It has now changed. It's for the purpose of witness. What? What does that mean? You have to ask the question. What's witness? There are a few lawyers in here. Witness is a legal terminology. Mean the one who give testimony. Where? 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 In court. Is the church with me? Yes. So, so court. So, so how does court come inside here? Substitute the word court for judgment. Ah, now you're getting me. Hey, how does judgment get in here? What does the gospel have to do with judgment? Oh, Jesus says, the reason we are preaching in the last days, if, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me. If people accept and convert, well, praise the Lord. If they don't, then hey, whoever has an ear, let him hear. Because the gospel is being preached now as what? A witness. Witness is somebody who gives testimony in a court, which means that it is evidence that will be presented in a judgment. Which means, which means, the reason the gospel is being preached in the last days is to prepare the world for judgment. Does that make sense? For judgment. Why? It is God's mercy. Not willing that any should perish, send the gospel back out to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Prepare for judgment. Prepare for judgment. Well, 
if you think if you think this preacher is crazy I'll give you two points and then I sit down I'll give you two points and then I sit down preacher since you're in the legal realm let's talk some law well maybe this is the reason why the Lord allowed me to do a law degree 2002 so let's talk some law number one is there any precedence for what is there any precedence for preaching for the purpose of witness whether people give their heart or not I sat down with my book and I'm writing and then the Holy Spirit says yes we're we're God oh ask Noah Noah yeah 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 stay with the preacher stay with the preacher how long did Noah preach 120 years how many people converted how many people converted from the gen from the community not a single person Hang on. did God not know before he instructed Noah to preach that nobody would respond yes all those who say yes raise your hand you think God knew that nobody would respond he already know that nobody would respond raise your hand so if he knew nobody's gonna respond why send the preacher out there to preach ah Noah's preaching was as a witness Noah's preaching was as a witness God already knew ain't nobody coming but he still sent the preacher out are you with me because this is not whether you know so shh, shh, shh. I have some pastors here I better be careful how I talk pastors close your ears you know there are some pastors who are not going out to preach if they know oh Lord. Hey, hey, hey if they know beforehand that ain't nobody responding they're not going out there but preachers in the last day the purpose for which we preach is not even for conversion repentance or saving a soul no no it is as a witness whosoever has an ear let him hear as a witness as a witness as a witness that's when I preach I don't care whether you come to the altar or not you know that's your choice I'm gonna preach anyhow because I have a mission to preach it as a witness because it will rise up in the judgment against you as a witness to a witness to who all nations and then the Bible says and then shall the end comes that was point one last point now last point so for the theologians in the house who ask where's where's the relationship between gospel and judgment where's the connection because gospel have nothing to do with judgment some people say gospel it has to do with love <laughs> love well pass your seatbelt because I'm gonna crack two texts and send you home you ready for it I'm in Revelation chapter 14 verse 6 here's what the text says come on Adventists know this text like the back of their hand it says what and I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven having what oh that same gospel is what we're talking about that's the one we're looking for this is the one that must be preaching all the world having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth to every nation tribe tongue and people so let's open that gospel and see what is in it saying with a loud voice what does it say what does the gospel say fear God give glory to him for what oh so the gospel is about judgment hey it's about judgment 
People say, oh, it's about God's love. Yes, it's God's love giving you a warning before judgment. Oh, and if still don't convince, I can give you another one. Suppose I, ah, let me talk to the choir. Suppose I tell you that the reason Jesus raised from the dead is to preside in the judgment. Oh, that there's a relationship between resurrection and judgment. Oh, resurrection is the gospel. Here's it. Acts 17, verse 30 and 31. Paul says to the guys on Mars Hill, Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to do what? Repent because he has appointed a day on which he will what? Judge the world in righteousness by who? By the man whom he has ordained. Who is that man? He has given us assurance of this to all by doing what? Raising him from the... The reason God raised Christ from the dead because he has a judgment to preside over. Resurrection and judgment. Gospel and judgment. And so I'm finished. I call you here this morning to tell you the last sign. The very last sign that will bring in the kingdom of God. The last sign that will crack open the sky. The last sign is being fulfilled in your very presence before your very eyes. Do not be mistaken to think that we may not be the very last generation on this planet because if the Bible is true when this gospel should have landed across the globe see Jesus can't come until everybody get the chance to either accept or deny are you with me so now you you can get a good idea of how close we are to the end that's why we have a baptism tomorrow. That's why we call people to give their heart to the Lord. Let me say this loud and clear. That's why we are taking in the children as well. Is the church with me? What would you do with them if the Lord comes tomorrow? Where do they go? I told you the other day, not a single one of them was saved in the ark. Not a single one of them. Every one of them drawn with their parents. So if you hear we say to mom and dad, bring your children, give your heart to the Lord, get baptized. The very last sign is being exploding around planet earth even as I speak. And Seventh-day Adventists cannot go on living as if they are not aware. Your life has to change to prepare yourself so that when you reach the pearly gates, there's no beep beep. That's what camp meeting is about. So I'm finished. And I'm going to call, as I did all week, my final call before baptism tomorrow. I'm going to call, if you have a husband, not yet given their heart to the Lord. If you have a wife, not yet given their heart to the Lord, take the message home. Video, it's videotaped. Give them a copy. Let them see it for themselves. If you have a mama, not yet given their heart to the Lord, or a papa, not yet given their heart to the Lord, or a brother or a sister, do what you can now. Don't wait until it's too late and say, oh my God, I should have, I should have, I could have, I should have. Do it because you have a sense of where we are. Do your work now. Get involved now and start with the people at home. I heard all of you have a, have a village. Am I right? Amen? Yes, yes, yes. All of you have a village. You have mamas and papas. At the village, brothers and sisters in the country. 
Do they, do they understand what you just heard a while ago? Your, 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 your fellow church members who are at work on their desk, earning a money, do they understand what you just heard a while ago? So now the onus is on you. Now the onus is on you to get involved. Try, do what Rahab did. <laughs> do what Rahab did when she heard that the spies were in town and she knew judgment was coming. And she knew destruction was coming. She, she get into action. She said, hey, I have a mama and a papa and some brothers and our sisters. They are downtown. I want them to be saved. How many of your family members you want to be saved? Raise your hand. You have family members you want to be saved. Yeah, I have some family members I want to be saved. So she negotiated with the spies. Can you help me to say, can you reach them for me? And of course, they did. They did. When the angels, when the two angels landed in, in Lot's house and told Lot, hey, Lot, God is going to bring down fire and brimstone in this city. Do you have anybody else here? Lot says, yes, I have two girls. They live downtown Sodom. The angel says, go get them. Lot left his house, went down there, knock on their door. It was night, y'all. Is the church with me? It was night. When the husband cracked the door open, oh, his pa. Hey, pa. What are you doing here? Pa walking. Says, pack up, pack up, pack up, pack up your things, pack up your things. Get out, get out. There are, there are two angels. <laughs> Lord, listen to the preacher. There are two angels at my house. And they say, they say, this place is going up in fire. Pack up. The boy say, Papa, calm down. Relax. Take a seat. Lot says, no, I can't take a seat. This place is going up in fire. Judgment is coming down and said, come on. Get out. We have a... Papa, calm down. Did you take your tablet this morning? Ain't no fire. We you see? Fire. And nothing that Lot could do to convince them. Nothing. Because they did not perceive that something like that could happen. And when Lot could not convince them, Lot decided to walk out. No, Papa, you don't need to go. You can stay here until tomorrow morning. Then you can get up early. Lot says, no, 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 no. No. He went back home empty-handed. Oh, let me talk to the ladies on the choir. Can you imagine Mrs. Lot? When husband come empty-handed. Where are my daughters? Oh, they. I couldn't convince them. Hey, did you try? I did everything. Did you try? I did everything I could. I did it. Wish to God I had gone because maybe I could convince them. The Lord says, I did what I can. I did what I can. I can't force them to be saved if they don't want to. No wonder Mrs. Lot never want to leave. She was the one. Dragging behind. And even though angel bring her out. She still had her mind back. In Sodom. Because the woman's. Maternal. Connection. Could not give her peace. To know. That two daughters are back in town. I'm, I'm passing through Nairobi. To make the final call. You can ask the choristers to join me. If your heart, if your soul, if your mind, if you have not yet given the, heart, the Lord Jesus Christ your heart, this is the day to do it. This is the day to do it. They're going to sing. I'm going to ask them to sing this little song. I've wandered far away from God. Now, 
coming home. I'm finished. Last call. Last call. Can the congregation stand with me? Rise. Last call. If you are down there and you have not given your heart to the Lord, tomorrow will be the baptismal service. Even if you came before, come again for the last time. Tomorrow is the baptismal service. We invite my pastors to join me. Come. Give your heart to the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, pastors. Come on. Come on. Come on. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Last call in Nairobi Central. You have not yet given your heart to the Lord. This is the moment. Come. Let it record in heaven. Let you make that decision. God bless you. God bless the little children, they're coming. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let's get them in the ark before the rainfall. God bless you. Never more to roam. Mama, come. Come, Mama, come, Papa. Come. Come, come, come. Get your family in the ark. Come. Last sign has been fulfilled. 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 Come. Come, husband. Come, wife. Come. Come, boyfriend. Come, girlfriend. Come. This is the power of decision. Come, come, come. Come, grandma. Come, grandpa. Come. Come, come, come. Last sign. Last sign. Last sign, praise the Lord, they're coming. Last sign, tomorrow is our baptismal service. Last sign, last sign. Come, husband and wife, come. Mother and daughter, come. Sister and brother, come. Maybe you came in this place today. It's not by accident. The Spirit of the Lord brought you here. Because he wants to save you. Come. Come, come, come. God bless you, I see you coming. God bless you, I see you coming. God bless you, I see you coming. I see you coming. Is there another? 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 God bless you, I see you coming. See you coming. Is there another? See you coming. Praise the Lord. Lord, I'm coming home. Lord, I'm coming home. Lord, I'm coming home. Is there another? In the name of Jesus. Last sign. Last sign, last sign. Last sign. Last sign. Last sign. Last sign. Last sign. Come. Last sign. Be fulfilled. Is there a moment? That's how close we are to the coming of Christ. Lord, I'm coming. Still coming, still coming, still coming, still coming, still coming. another. Not yet give your heart to the Lord. Maybe you were in the church some time ago. But you slip away. You want to reconnect to Jesus. This is your time. Lord, I'm coming.
pardon me, my time is up, but pardon me, I always want to be obedient to the Spirit. Members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, camp meeting is for us, it's for us. The letter we read last night from God to Leodisa is for us, it's for us. As we draw the curtains down on this service, I want to make a last appeal from the elders all the way down the last person at the back of the church. If you have been in this church and all is not well with your soul, this is the time to make it right with God. Because the referee has the whistle in his mouth. Checking his watch. Any moment now, the final whistle will blow. You would be a fool to be in the church for years and still lose your soul. lose your soul so I'm appealing all church members if all is not well you and God know that come come the referee has a whistle in his mouth any moment now the final whistle will go off game is over the match stop he that is filthy remain filthy still and he that is holy remain holy if you know your soul's occupation between you and God camp meeting is to reconnect you come come if you sense that I need to recommit my life, Jesus. Come. You think the last answer? Now, I'm coming home. I need His blessing. second step or to the back up to the back to the back as much as you can the prodigal son came home after a period of wild living and the father welcomed him open arms open arms but his brother had a problem with him. 
so big a problem? So angry with him? So big a problem that he would not even go in to the celebration. When the servant says, come your brother is home. Let's come and celebrate. He stays outside. Servant went and told the daddy. Daddy came out and said, son, come in. He was angry. And he said something that struck me. He says, he says, Father, all these years I have been at home. I've never left. Oh, I've never wasted your property. Never lived wild life. Never break the commandments. Never. I've been always a good guy. A faithful member of the church. Live my life according to the policies and the guidelines. All these years, I have been here with you every single day. And you never throw a party for me. And you never kill a fatted calf for me. He was angry. And I have one question for the bigger brother. How is it that you have been in the father's house all these years, never left his side, but your character is so different from your daddy's. How is it that none of your father's character have rubbed off on you? If you have been with your father all these years, how is it you're so different from your father that you can't even welcome your brother back home? How is it that being in the church didn't help you? How? And it is at that time I realize some of us will be lost right in church. We don't break the commandment. We don't steal. We don't lie. We don't do this stuff. Like last night's message, false sense of spirituality. But our hearts are from God. There may be other people in the church that we're not talking to. There may be people who say all manner of stuff against us and our family that we have up in our soul. There may be elders that we don't like. There may be stuff underneath there that threatens your soul salvation. It could even be there may be people in your family, your mother-in-law. Maybe your ex-husband or your ex-wife that you're bitter against. You can't pass through the pearly gate if there's any bitterness in your soul. But you're not going to heaven to grumble. Camp meeting is designed to help us. So I've cleared this altar. These are the folks who have decided to give their heart to the Lord in baptism. I've cleared this altar for the rest of us. Members of the church who have personal issues struggling with the ref. The referee has the whistle in his mouth checking his watch. Any moment now, final whistle will go. And I'm talking to Nairobi. Let nobody let nobody prevent you from making it into the kingdom of Almighty God. No family member, no co worker, no boss, nobody who say anything against you or do anything against you that, you that you are struggling with. Let nothing. So if you stand in church this morning and there are some stuff that you and God have not yet solved. Step out of your seat because I'm going to pray for you here. Come. Because we're going home together. Come. We're going home together. Come, 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 come. We're going home together. This is for us in church. This is for us in church. If when I, if when I take the plane, the Lord comes before I ever land back in Nairobi, I want to make sure we give everybody in church the 
the opportunity to clean up and straighten up and flush out and flush out and sort out because I'm not leaving, letting anybody stop me anybody stop me anybody stop me Heart of my boy, anybody stop me so flush out the horses flush out the horses Jesus I come anybody you are struggling to forgive Jesus, come flush out your system people do things to you when you struggle hard for you to let go come Come, 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 This is for us. 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 Hey, this is for us. This is for us. This is for us. This is for us. From hell all the way down. If there's anything, anybody, any issue, any circumstance, Jesus, I come to thee. Out of my shameful failure and loss. I come. Is there anybody else? Jesus, I come. Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. Jesus, I come. Coming. Coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. stop us from being saved and if you try to live right and if you try to do what the Lord says and he can't get you one way he'll try another way if he can't get you to violate God's commandment and live wild he will send folks in your life to hurt you so that you develop resentment against them. You die with that bitterness. In the resurrection morning, you're not in the number. I have had that experience myself. So I can preach from experience. And I had to take a decision. Hey, no Lord, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. No matter what you do against me, I am going to zip down my heart and let you out. Because you are not going to stop me from making it to the kingdom of heaven. I am going home. I am going home. You are not going to, nobody going to stop me. So you can do and say anything and say, 
I am not going to hold you up in my heart because I don't want to beep, beep when the Lord comes. No, 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 no. Not after I made so much sacrifice to make it to the kingdom of God. Am I going to make somebody to stop? No, no, no. There is nobody on the planet so important to stop me from making it to the kingdom of God. So I am zipping my heart down and let you out. I am forgiving you in Jesus' name. And I want you to do the same. Because that's how the devil works. He will do anything to stop you from making it to the kingdom of God. That is why I'm making this appeal today on this penultimate day of our camp meeting. For church members, bigger brothers, bigger brothers who are hurt and are affected by stuff that others have done. And that could possibly threaten your soul's salvation. I want it. I'm encouraging you. Drop it today. Release it today. Let it go today. Yeah. Let it go today. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Because if you don't, that same person will stop you from making it to the kingdom of God. And then both of you end up in hell. No, no, no. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Release those persons and let them go. Amen. Just say, Lord, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. But in the name of Jesus, let it go. We're going to pray two prayers today. I'm going to pray for these guys on the lower platform. Pastor, you will either do the other one or assign somebody to do the ones for those who have decided to give their hearts in baptism. Invite the congregation to stand, to remain standing with me as I pray for these, my brothers and sisters who have already given their heart to the Lord are in the church, but on these last moments before the ref blows, they have a little stuff to work out with the Lord. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads with me, lift your heart towards heaven. I want you to search your soul and find the issue. Whatever it is that brought you up here, find that issue. Find that issue. Find that issue. Put it out in front of you and tell God, Lord, remove this from me. Take it out. Do a surgery, an operation on me and remove it completely, completely. I am letting it go in the name of Jesus. Whatever hurt is there, whatever pain is there, I am let, whatever resentment, whatever malice, whatever anger, I am letting it go in the name of Jesus. God, this is the cry of your people here in this church on this particular day. I'm happy that they came forward because had you come last night, they perhaps would not have made it into your kingdom because of these issues. God, and so I ask you as they open their hearts to you that you'll pass by every single one of them and in your own sweet way eradicate, wash out, flush out every feeling of resentment, every feeling of hurt, every feeling of pain, every unforgiveness, flush it out of their system, God. Create in them Every one of them, God, a clean heart and renew a right spirit in their mind. Give them the capacity to release and let go and feel relieved and feel fresh and feel the assurance, God, that they are forgiven. May they leave this podium feeling light. May they go back home rejoicing that now they can march to Zion. Amen. And God, not just for today, if that rascal, the devil, send anybody else on their way to trip them up, put an edge around them, Jesus. Amen. For the only reason they are here is because they are serious about going home. Thank you for them, Lord, and thank you for what you will do for them. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, let God's people say,
Amen. Together with this prayer, O oh Lord, we thank you because you are called. You are knocking in our hearts with your merciful, gentle voice. The Lord, with the preaching that has been heard, our hearts have been touched and you have moved even the thoughts and the hearts of the young ones to come so that they can be ready for your return. You have moved many who have written their names ready for baptism. Others are still standing and others have come up from O oh Lord. We pray that you may seal this decision. Seal with the Holy Spirit this decision for your courts above. Preparing them and preparing the relatives and their parents. So the Lord, together, we can journey to the heavenly courts. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the feast for a whole week in wonderful messages. Straight messages that challenges us. And makes us know that we have to get involved. And part of getting involved is by our souls being filled with your love. With your presence. And with this power that stops us from doing the things we have done wrong all along. Oh Lord, take residence and let your kingdom come to each and everyone who has stood and especially to those who are giving their lives for baptism. Thank you, Lord. Because you baptize us with the Holy Spirit and you accept our decision. As Paul says, we know that you will keep that which we have committed to mm. you against that day of judgment. Mm -hmm. So the Lord, even when the evil one wants to point to our past, you have written it off. And you have called us righteous and justified. Thank you, Lord, because of your sweet promise and the power that you came from heaven to enter into our state so that you can lift us up only by looking and by believing. Oh, Father, we have looked up to you. We have seen your sacrifice. We have heard your message and we know we are living in the last days. But even if we may not live to see you come in glory with our being as it is, even if we may have to slip in the dust before you come, Father, we thank you that you are preparing us through mm. baptism and through the messages you have given us and this faith so that we are ready. And we know when you come in glory, those who have believed in you, including our loved ones who may have rested, that sound of the archangel, when he shall sound it, those who believe in you, those who have done what they could will rise up in glory. Thank you, Lord, because we have prayed. We have raised our hands up and here is a team who are ready to be baptized. Accept us all and send us forth to call many, preparing them for your soon return. 
accept our worship, accept this decision we have made, and seal us and fill us with the Holy Spirit uniting us so that, Lord, we can worship you in truth and in spirit. Thank you because you have made us your sons and daughters because of the life of Jesus Christ who came so that he can give us life and give us that life more abundantly. I thank you for hearing and answering us in your goodness and riches in glory in Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. Amen.